Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Engineering Money, the podcast where some full-time engineers give their two cents on the financial news of the week. This and we don't introduce ourselves anymore. We don't, but we do have a sponsor this week. Um, what? We're sponsored by Cam Slam Hot <laughs> Sauce. Uh, yes. My favorite Cam flavor Slam. is the Grebe Sauce. Yeah, Grebe Sauce is pretty good. <laughs> Guaranteed um, is delicious. But pineapple, mango, pineapple mango jalapeno is also really good. No, it's habanero. What's habanero. That, that mustard base that he got like custom art for? Mustard sauce. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, like, for like Oktoberfest or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that one was good. And actually, Ben, it's Cam Slam Premium Pepper Sauces. Yes. Right. Yeah, I get the correct name. Awesome. So Joey is in charge this week. Take it away, kid. That's right. And all I want to say is short Johnson and Johnson because they hurt me. All right. Thanks How everybody for you? listening to another episode of engineering money. <laughs> <laughs> I got the, their vaccine and it, it ruined me for like four hours. I couldn't move. Oh, that's it. I thought it was supposed to be a whole day. I mean, it was a whole day of, of misery, but it was concentrated in four hours where it like, I I was just dead to the world. What did it feel like? It like a f- severe fever. <laughs> oh, you had a fever? I didn't take my temperature, but it was like really bad chills. Just your body doesn't know how to regulate temperature anymore. Mm. But that's just your body uh, getting used to the disease and making antibodies. Yeah, I was just just riddled with viral vectors. <sighs> Sounds like you got a bunch of microchips now, you sheep. It's true. So, yeah, I'm now um, obligated to say buy Microsoft. Also, well, I heard that after you get the vaccine, um, your cell service gets better. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's impressive. I, I'm glad. <laughs> but, okay, guys, what I, what I really have been thinking about for a couple weeks now, because we had last week off and I was going to talk about it then, but then holidays We don't happened. talk about last week. Yeah. What do you mean last week? What I want to ask you is how do you look at a stock? Usually with my eyes. Yeah. If I if I see enough people talking about it on Wall Street bets, it's a buy. Easy. Okay, but how how do you look at it? Like if you were to explain to someone who didn't know what a stock is and how you look at it. And, and analyze it. How would you explain it quickly? All right. I look at their oh, one year the performance as like a first visual glance to see what's going on. And it, it all depends on what kind of a mood I'm in, really, in terms of am I looking for something that's doing well and I think will continue doing well, or am I looking for some bargain buys? Mm. See, and in that, then I think is kind of the, the heart of what I'm trying to get at. It's like, are you looking, are you looking at a stock as a piece of a company, which it literally is supposed to represent, right? And so, in that sense, you might be saying, all right, is this a good company? Is this company doing well? Or the other way, it's kind of a change of mindset when you're looking at the stock as a bargain opportunity, because then. You're, you're looking at it, it could be like anything. It could be a baseball card that's selling for cheaper than you think it's worth. It's it's a, a, a steal that you're trying to get in on at that moment. And you might not even be thinking about what what is this company? Would I feel good owning this company like, or not? Like this box of magic cards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't like get them box, into it. You might, you might uh, not care for Wizards of the Coast but as a company, but maybe they're doing well right now. And so you, you think it's a good buy opportunity. And I, I just kind of, I've been thinking about this, like depending on what you're thinking of this purchase of yours as you're buying a stock, what are you thinking of it as now I'm owning some of a company, now I'm getting a good bargain opportunity or, or whatever it is can kind of change the way you're going to analyze it. Mm. And I've been thinking about this specifically in the sense of like, all right, there's fundamental analysis, technical analysis, quantitative analysis. And I think you can see people get into kind of arguments over which one is best. It's like, 
oh, technical analysis, you're just drawing squiggles on a chart. That doesn't compare to fundamentals where you're analyzing the books of a company and saying, are they, are they really worthwhile? Well, it's, it's different because uh, the technicals, I view it as, you know, day-to-day -day market momentum. And yeah. the fundamentals is what the force that drives the movement over the long term. So would you tell someone who's saying, I'm looking at the, the midterm technicals, they're going to tell me how this is going over six months to a year. Are you saying, no, that's, that's not even worth looking at technicals? I, I agree with Tim. It, like Technicals I see as a tool when you're doing like day, day trading or like swing trading. Um, but once you start pushing it out on a farther timeline, there's so many other variables that become more and more important that are external of just the graph and the, the technical, how the graph is moving. Right, because that's, that's really what a technical is, isn't it? it? All it's looking at is the stock's price, the history of its price, and its volume. Those are the only two things. And then you get all these crazy calculations that go on to give you different oscillators and indicators to decide if you want to buy the stock or not. But yeah, it. I think that that's kind of the the most the most narrow kind of form of when technicals are good is is if you're just day trading. But mm -hmm. ah yes, yeah. the floor here is made of floor. <laughs> Thank you. But I, <laughs> my my point is, I think that technicals. The, if people are asking like, hey, should I use technicals? What I think the answer I like to give is you should use technicals when there's a gap in other information. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily only last a day because you might have this really unknown stock that there's no news coming out about it. And in that case, you might it might be driven by technicals, but by the market sentiment of price and volume more than anything else for weeks at a time. Can I throw you and an I example? I think those are the situations where technicals can help you out. Can I throw you an example to walk through? Go for it. N-A-K. Yes, NAC. So how are they doing, by the way? I sold my shares in them. Let me let me bring up the chart here. They're kind of at an I at a new equilibrium. I sold at a good time. Yes. So we first started talking about NAK at the uh, beginning of the year when it was sitting right. around 30 to 35 cents. Um, and there was like problems with their mining plan with the Army Corps and they needed to resubmit. And it was at the end of February, I want to say, they like got a response back. But now they're just kind of like making their new mining plan. So there isn't going to be news for a while. Mm. So is this like right. a People good good example of, of that situation you're talking about? Yeah, you know, so I'm looking through the news and events on the, the NAK page mm -hmm. on Fidelity right now. And I'm seeing Northern Dynasty options imply 19% move. Like that is a bot posted that. It's just autom automatic post. Um, they get all these like forms filled out that insiders are doing something all, all of it is like these automatic yeah. posts mm -hmm. the last news looks like developers of alaska's pebble mine xco served subpoenas that's like an actual news story mm. that happened in february so it's been like two months since news was, was released so i would say yes this is a situation where it is likely that that your technical indicators are going to give you a better idea of what's going on than, than waiting for the next news to come out because there isn't any news. <laughs> and uh, for that point, the recognical, recogni excuse me, the recognia, which is a company, technical analysis says NAK, short term, mid term strong, long term weak. So, boom, you know. There you go. Might be a, a good short-term buy right now. But what's but, so so now that we've given an example for our uh, 
company where technicals might be a good opportunity, a, a good way to look at it. It's like if you're looking at NAC and that lens, then you might not even care what they do. You might not care what the company is, um, how their cash flow is doing, whatever. If right now it's all about technicals and the technicals are saying it's a good a good buy opportunity, it might not even be necessarily a bargain buy right now. Yeah. But it, it's just technicals. I mean, it's a it's pretty low down there. As far as being a cheap stock. Yeah, <laughs> yes. she is a yes, penny Joey. stock. That is true. Because the price is cheaper, that means I can buy more. So who 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 cares? <laughs> I mean, okay, but so is is something like Johnson and Johnson, the opposite. Right. So Johnson and Johnson is what's the stock price right now? One sixty one. Um. So significantly more expensive than a share of Mac. Well, I'm saying in terms of the the technical versus other types of risk lens. Oh, right. So, so like, yeah, Johnson Johnson, actually, a bunch of news has been coming out about their shots um, being recalled or a yeah. shortage. It melted that dude's over the place. skin off. Didn't you see the Fox News what? article about it? I mean, no. I'm all worried about getting blood clots now. So, <laughs> Are you, Joey? No, I'm going to be fine. Okay. Because but... I'm scheduled to get the J&J. Oh, yes. Triple J game yeah let well, me let me see if i can pull up that article that i i don't because i texted i, don't I texted why. you about it when you you said oh the johnson johnson's the chad like yeah, didn't you hear about the, the guy chad, that like, got his skin melted off it's the chad one pump stab that's what it is chad one pump stab okay that's true it, it is very nice that i don't have to think about my next shot <laughs> Let's see it, yeah, man. I want here to see. it is. <laughs> All right, this is uh, from Health Leaders Media, so you know Sounds it's like a reputable source. You know it's super reputable source. Man skin peeled off. <laughs> <laughs> Quote peeled off. <laughs> well. Poor guy. He was. Sorry. He's a Virginia he's guy, 74? seventy-four years old. Four days after receiving the vaccine, painful rash and skin started to peel off. Do you, do you think he got sunburnt? Look at this know. dude. You think this oh, guy man. gets sunburned? He doesn't look like a uh, uh, sunburned type of guy. Nah, I've gotten a sunburn before and my skin peeled off. Oh my yeah, god! Look at him. <laughs> Wait, it's his legs. Did he get sh the shot in the legs? I guess it's saying that it was four days later, so it's everywhere now. And we're going to have to make this not safe for kids on YouTube uh, now. What do you mean? It's just his legs. Uh, for those listeners out there, check the no, YouTube No, you don't need to describe it. Yeah, for, check the YouTube uh, video. Us. It's really in important. Medical condition. Um. We did hours of extensive research to find these articles, and we're only giving you the best news. From the New there. York Post. Post. <laughs> I love the New York Post. It is That's the New York best, Post, though. Yeah. Sensationalized headlines. <laughs> yeah. They never have sensationalized headlines. Never. So, um, yeah, there you go. Johnson & Johnson, an example of something with news all over the place. So if you're thinking, hey, I'm buying them, it's either – it's probably be, be going to be from this news making the stock go down and you saying, I think Johnson & Johnson is a good company, so I want to get in on that. I want to be, be a part of it and own some of that. And so that's, that's another way to look at the stock compared to your technicals where you might not even care who they are. Yeah, yeah. but... Never mind, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> well, let me bring up then a third way to look at stocks to take okay. that is as a gambling opportunity because yeah. you might have no technicals or evaluation or quantitative analysis that shows that GME is about to spike, but then you hear about it on Reddit and you buy GameStop. What about what about but, like SPACs? Couldn't you 
think of of those under that same lens too as almost a gamble i hate that specs could be yeah it's it, because it's you don't know when this surge is going to happen, but you're just betting that some surge is going to go on. And, well, and it's like, I'm saying before the SPAC even connects with their final business. They're just saying, hey, we are a company that would like to buy something else. Yes. And let them go public. Yeah. And then, yeah, to, to invest in that, it's kind of it's a big it's gamble. Because you, you can't say it's because you're trying to buy a good company. You don't even know what it is yet. Yeah, and technicals aren't going to show you anything because the, the price isn't really moving until the news comes out, and they don't make any money, right? So, yeah, it's, rip it's in peace, of, highly uh, in holdings. Look at it. Yeah, Hylian's not looking too good right now, boys. Hylian, I st I still have my position uh, as a to to tell to remind myself of my mistake. I, I do. Was that, that the hydrogen cell company? No, no, they make electrified trucks. Oh, what what's their ticker? Like semi trucks. Yeah. H Y L N. But <laughs> with these spacks, they do have a f they have a floor at about uh ten dollars because that's what the initial price was. Right. So it's kind of hit the floor. <laughs> They're, they're about at their floor. Ooh. When did you buy? I don't want to say. <laughs> September? I don't want to say, Ben. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Jim. Oh, no. This, this is the worst. I, I'm i going to treat this like Joey's uh, BE. No, this, is, hey, this is why this is we need like a laugh track. You didn't like my Malincross. I'm still holding my shares of Malincross. Hey. This could come back. <laughs> BE did terrible after its IPO, and then oh, you okay. kept it for a few years, and then it because it, BE is a great company. You just said you led with you <sighs> hold your failures to remind yourself. What is okay, Melon Crowd's ticker? It could be successful in the future. Is what I'm saying. Okay. But What's Melon Crowd? Yeah, Melon Crowd's so stinky. It's. They got a new ticker what? when they went bankrupt. Oh, no. <laughs> it's M-N-K-K-Q. That's big stink. Oh, my stinky stinky. <laughs> <laughs> but I still hold my shares to remind myself what happened. Wow. <laughs> when did you buy, Joey? So, Malincrot... I remember we had Melon We talked Crot. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because Joey was like, man, they're a really old company. They must, they're, they're really, they're beaten down right now. They've got to be able to come back. No, I'm thinking well, I, like, I, Joey, I, I, we I, talked about this when we lived together. Right. So, so that would be how many years ago now? That how was years? like 2018 and 19. Uh, they, they peaked around $35, I think. I bought them at like 15 So it was awesome. And then I oh, them. so you probably bought them in like yeah. summer, spring, summer 18. I bought them right in there and then they like doubled. It was great. And every downturn, I was like, okay, this is this is just, you know, they're about to come back up now. It's good buy opportunity. And then they went bankrupt. And it's just, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think any of the ways that we look at stocks will tell you to buy a melon crop right now. <laughs> Did, were you, at that point, were you looking at the fundamentals? I because was, I know back then when I was looking at stocks, I was not, I was like, line go up here. So that means down, it should go up more. Yeah, that was, that was in my earlier days. I was definitely... I remember my mindset back then being like, the first thing I'm going to learn is technicals. So I was probably looking at technical indicators. Mm. And that's because I read somewhere that on average, technical indicators actually do give you a better prediction than fundamentals. But that was a while ago. That was when I was yeah. young and naive. So where were we going with this conversation? Because we have to be done in 10 seconds. 
Uh, I think we. I think we, we were just discussing no, the, the differences. Is what it's really about rather than the destination. Oh, okay. Well, we did it. All right. Link. Uh, link us in the description. Your uh, least favorite type of cabbage.